good morning. Right again. We're raining this morning, but it's supposed to be nice up here, so I took a gamble and uh, so far it looks like it's paid off. So I'm at Duffstones. That's Alderman's Hill, that's one of the best views in the Peak District, looking over this lot. So, preliminary plan. Subject to change, as always, is just up here, just going past the sailing club, there's a, a road that goes off to my uh, right, which is access to a farm, which is also allegedly a footpath. Several targets of interest. Just in the bottom of this gully here is a uh, Dakota, which I've not been to since about 2013. And I've just looked on GPS, for some reason I've not got it logged. So, yeah, path coming up here, turn right, if it's accessible. I'll wake you up in the morning in one power for one power for one hour, two power for two hours, four pound all day. So part of the pay by card only as well. There's pots and pans, uh, war memorial and alderman's hill. I say that gives you an epic view of these three reservoirs and just an edge. So I say I come from car park up through that farm over this field here over a fence and uh, I'm now in the off-piece section uh, and the Dakota is at the bottom of one of these two cliffs I'm fairly sure it's this one could be that one but for some reason it's missing off the GPS all the rest are there but that one isn't so a bit of a technical oversight but so just going from memory I'll uh, get into that I'm fairly sure it's this one but if it isn't, I'll have to scoot back over to that and come back on myself again. But first, I've got to pick my way there. And a bit of flagging here, but probably just a sheep job. But uh, we shall see. Going in the general ballpark, get to the base of the uh, base of the clough, and uh, work it out from there. I've come up to this cliff here, this don't cut all familiar, it's got to be in the next one which is the main one at the side of uh, Indian Head so I've just dropped my bag at uh, Rock over there uh, just to loosen the load a little bit while I'm off pisting so I'm going to basically go back that way so just come over here, see if I can find the wreck and uh, backtrack to pick the bag up sort of contour around and uh, yeah, cut out that section it'd be harder going because it's off piece but it's got these hidden little uh, rivers so you have to take a gamble when you leap across I think when I first came to this I came, uh, I went around past the sailing club and up there and then fought back through here and then I went up there as a scramble just as I thought I'll use that to, bit of a stump to just hold me down as soon as I looked at it I thought oh that looks a bit dead it certainly is Ta da voila one section of Dakota so I opened it in that first cloth, but it's not, it's in the second one. So I've actually have left the bag up there, over there, and then cut across and just down to find it at least. So that's uh, that mission accomplished. So that's uh, all good. I haven't fought all that way and not found it. That would uh, slightly miff me. But well, because I've not got it in, uh, in GPS, I have to remember where it is from about uh, 10 years ago. Take a few photos and then go and retrieve my bag and uh, go from there. But yeah, last time I came this way, I scrambled up, up there, brings you out at the top of the Clough, up uh, near Indian Head. Might be a bit, uh, bit sketchy today. It can be sort of mossy and slippy on this rock when it's wet especially. My bag should be. It is under that rock. Right. So, 
I'm just uh, I don't have the bag here, I just contoured around, put me over to the clough, what puts me blow Indian head, uh, and went my way back down to find the Dakota, which is down there. So I can't have come up here really for no reason uh, to go over there to go down, found the target. And of course, I'd left my bag being smart ass. Uh, I've come back up <laughs> to retrieve it. Because uh, when I was down there, well, when I was here, my plan was go and find the Dakota, pick the bag back up, and then contour around uh, to pick up the uh, plateau up there. But then, when we have to backtrack and go down again, I should have bought a bag because basically I've only had to just drop back down past that uh, wall and the pass there, so I'd have been easier walking. But then, as I was coming back up to find the bag, I just saw a figure walking along the top. So that is the top, it's not a false summit. Uh, so I'm now back to, I'll stay high and contour uh, and side swipe up it sort of thing uh, until I get to the top and uh, head over to Alfin Pike uh, Trig Point which is one of these Ethel things as well and the mosquito is there's uh, a bit of a clough going up the side of the Duffstone Edge there, so that more or less in line with the um, reservoir it goes up there, picks up this service road, then it splits into two. I think at the, in the left hand one there, you go across the top and uh, drop down the face, uh, that probably to where I am now, altitude wise, off the top, and then there's a little bit of debris uh, for the mosquito. I want to go up there again at some point as well, aldermen's and pots and pans. But there used to be a lay-by where there's that farm there. There's a lay-by just at the side. You used to be able to park in there, but they put double yellow lines all over it. Which is a bit uh, unnecessary. But anyway, I've caught my breath, so I'll get my bag and head up. Ooh. I've got fast-moving water. To attempt to cross. Woo, I'm under <laughs> and the ground doesn't drop out from under me. That's only it. Into, ooh, into a water course. Fun parts of off piste in winter. Just trying to stay above or keep the water below more the point of your boots. Which is all that way I've got vegetation. You can uh, hopefully displace your weight. I've just no idea how uh, how wide or deep it is. But you kind of committed at a certain point. That should be it because I'm climbing again, so I should intersect a path in uh, short order. A bit like that. Uh, easier walking from now. Fancy style. The windbreak at Alfin Pike. Shouldn't be too far away. Crepuscular rays. Voila. Or is it not far from that windbreak? It's actually half built into it. Alfin Pike. There you go then. I'll, uh, cup of tea time. So then quick up to Alfin Pike and now backtrack uh, along this edge now that first sort of big rock out crop here lower down on the edge is uh, Indian Head so off piece we go again hopefully it's relatively dry I think there are a couple of uh, sort of little boggy areas to cross but what I've been on so far is quite dry so we'll uh, we'll give it a We'll give it a whiz. 
So basically where we're heading south, got to head south uh, from here, uh, 0.6 of a mile, just under a quarter of a mile to go. The stream. It's been a lot drier than I expected. There's been a couple of little squidgy bits, but uh, nothing to concern. There's a geocache up here as well. In fact, last time I was here, there'd been a big fire on this moor. So all this was burnt. Obviously it's uh, recovered quite nicely. Oops. What's your foot in? Because there's uh, certainly no sign of fire damage at the moment. So it's all rejuvenated, which is a good thing. Uh, I found this geocache at the wreck years ago when I first came to the wreck. Uh, and then when I came to it again, I said there'd been all this fire damage and then there's geocache just sat there on top of a little mound, unscathed and when I looked in it I found my uh, my signature from a visit several years prior and it's been a few years since I've been here again so I'll have to see if uh, See if I can find it again and see if they've still got the same logbook. Keep an eye on my bearings as well as keep an eye on what's under my foot. There's a couple of uh, debris pools for this. Uh, probably about 100 metres apart. Uh, and various bits sort of surface and uh, get moved etc. Disappear over time. So we shall see what we can find. I think there's some debris there. I think that's the second pool. So I'll come back to that. There's a bit. Not got that marked. Here in the uh, middle of nowhere ski. Again, not a great lot of black left. Jeez, it's quite uh, quite heavy. Uh, so there's the uh, liberator. What's left of it? There's another little section about 50, 30 meters that way. Geocache is there. It's a new geocache. Uh, when I came last time, it literally sat on top of that grass uh, lump there, different container, but the, that's a new one uh, with a new log book. There's only about three people signed it. I haven't got pen on me, so I haven't been able to sign it, but I just took a photo of it. So I'll re-log it when I, uh, when I get back. Another section there, just walk past. And then main debris there, so undercarriage leg and a wheel. And, uh, and things. There's the main debris pool. So main debris pool there, and a short piece over there. Looking at that, I think that's actually Alfin Pike right on the summit of there. So technically, I could have come all the way across here. Yeah, whereas I didn't, I went along the edge and I broke across this way. So obviously, it shortened the off piste. Uh, so now, effectively, just got to head back north, I think. Um, I'm heading that away, but uh, obviously, that way is off piste a lot further. So I'll head back roughly to the path uh, and intersect it. It was fairly dry over that side, whereas uh, I think there's a few more riverbeds if I went sort of straight tangent. So I'll, uh, I'll sort of head in the general ballpark of the way I came in and try and keep out the, uh, out the water and then head over to the tiger moth, which is over there. 
still on the off piece section heading back from the Liberator. Not a lot in the way of plant life other than Heather, or then a random bush. difference 100 meters makes I came in over there and it was drier than a dry thing but uh, just 100 meters uh, this side and it's a different kettle of fish that's the edge over there so basically shortest distance there put my way around these uh, watercourses in that general direction until I set the path uh, when I came off the path if it had been like I'm seeing now I'd have probably aborted this second it's not a major problem like but it would have probably just gone now nah, can't be bothered that's it Indian head coming to view so I'll uh, head for that rock outcrop talking to a chap there is uh, he knows of a wreck over near Chinley Churn I've not actually been over that side uh, I'm not aware of one over there but I'll have to have a look if there's actual debris in place I shall go and have a look at it for it yeah. that's the service road that goes up to uh, Chew Reservoir so that's where I'm heading on the uh, from the high level obviously uh, to the Tiger Moth um, and then go from there really uh, take it onto this edge go down to the mosquito well, what's happened to my GPS it's got some coordinates in and it's got others are missing like I say it had uh, it's got the Liberator in which I've been to it didn't have the Dakota in which I found because I remembered where it were roughly. it's got the mosquito in uh, but it hasn't got the tiger moth in which is where I'm allegedly heading for now so again I've either got to write that one off or try and find it from memory I've got an idea where it is but I'll see when I, uh, when I get to it we're going to intersect the top of uh, Wilderness Gully which is uh, one of classic scrambles in Peter Street so I did that a few years ago so yeah we're going to go across here try and pick up the tiger moth um, across the bottom of the tube there's like a path that comes down brings you down onto this service road and then there's a bit of a quarry that puts you basically onto this edge uh, which will turn me around to the uh, around to the mosquito uh, and then I've got a choice of either bugging out at that point um, down back to the reservoir side or carry on which is the initial plan uh, carry on over to the trinical This is Wilderness Gully. Be a bit, uh, a bit moist at the moment. All right, decisions, decisions. So I'm on the main uh, path here. Come over all the way around here. Come back to the to be honest. And now two reservoir is straight in front of me. Now the tiger moth is over here. Right. So gonna have a sort of cursory wander and see if we can happen on it um, which I think I'll be very lucky if I do I can't recall how far away from the uh, 
from the wall it is not too far i don't think oh how far off the path so it's one of them i could have already gone past it but i'll have a little uh, a little fettle Just press record as that flew out. I don't know if I caught him or not. Slightly annoying thing with this is I'm tracking all this on my GPS. So when I get my phone on the computer, I'll have the uh, the flag in for the wreckage. I'll be able to see how, how close or how far away I actually was. Something down here, I think it's a rock, but uh, I'd better go and check. Yep, it was a rock. I missed it, I think, pretty sure. I'll say I weren't, weren't this far it's further over that way or a bit further up uh, than what I went. So I'll say I'll be intrigued to see how close I was when I get back on PC. Well, they went far away but far enough not to see it so i've come across uh, i've just come off the thing in the united and that's just over there so i've come all across that sort of pathway to there just bugged out off piece looking for tiger moth where i haven't got the coordinates to hand uh, so unsurprisingly i didn't find that uh, so now i'm just going to drop down the surface road 100 meters and then break back up onto the uh, access and there's a path then what runs around the edge gonna pull up a rock and uh, have a minute no one about two reservoir there's the dam wall there basically the uh, rams over there so I've just got to find a path up which looks like I've just passed one so take it come up from Dove Stones when you get to the quarry more or less at the top of the service road you just break up onto a path here and it takes you back round onto the edge so just not quite seven miles in so the car park is down there that's Dove Stone Reservoir the uh, car park is just around well, that's the dam wall basically so it's below that and I came up here we took that access road to that farm through that farm up across their farmland uh, over a fence and then up to the Dakota wreck and then I cut across diagonally contoured up onto the top and then over to Alfin Pike which is right on the end of that uh, ridge over there backtracked across Indian Head which is this rock outcrop at the same height as me now as people just going up to it actually so before I got to that I cut over about half a mile into the moor to the Liberator, came back to Indian Head, over to that rock outcrop, towed on round on the, on that face, uh, broke off in to look for the tiger moth, failed, uh, two reservoirs just over there and then uh, come back on the surface road 100 metres and that's put me onto this edge. So I'm going to stay on this edge path all the way around, uh, say there's uh, the mosquito uh, which is you have to drop off the cliff edge uh, and go down maybe 80 to 100 meters uh, to find that decisions decisions just uh it's four o'clock i'm just going to leave the bag there i've got to drop down this rock face about 410 feet and then climb back up to carry on but nah, i thought i'd enough so what I might do is uh, let's do a pass down there or intersect the service road and then the car's just around there so all right decision made bag back on so I'm gonna break down here 450 feet pick up the mosquito and then uh, bug out down the face and back to the car I'll still make about eight miles probably so that's enough for today I've done a fair bit of off-piste involved in that. Well, I've come from up top of there. I certainly ain't going back up it. It was just as rough and ready as I remember it. So, here we are. 
mosquito. Very, uh, very little debris left. I think there's something carved in a rock somewhere. So we can find that in a minute. But, uh, there we are. It says something, but I can't really make it out. Uh, there must be a path on that side of the uh, bit of a clough. So I'm going to make my way over there and uh, see if I can uh, pick it up. I've got a watercourse straight in front of me, I've just got to be careful of. The mosquito is one of these rocks right at the very bottom. I uh, come across here, jump across this bit of a forward thing, and then uh, I'm now onto a path for the rest of the way back. I go through the ford or over the uh, over the bridge. Wash the boots off. They should be fairly clean anyway. There's not been uh, too squishy up there too much. So, so it's just this now. Back down here, past the sailing club, and uh, to the car park. Job done. And that closes the loop because that's where I went up this morning. I mean, I cut it short, but it's still uh, still a good, decent trek. 8.85 miles, 5, 5 hours, 22 minutes. 